In this video, I'm going to show you how I build the backend for my applications to store data such as the users, authentication, and data to make my applications functional. And this won't be one of those videos where I'm just going to show you a simple picture of what the backend is. I'm also going to show you a real life example of how I've implemented the backend so you understand the real use case of it. But firstly, okay, before we get to the screen and start looking over some code, what the hell is the back end, right? And I made this cool little diagram for us just so we can understand that a little bit better. However, here is how the back end works. In most applications, right, we usually have the front end, an API, and the back end. And you know, you probably know what the front end is, but I'm gonna tell you anyways. The front end is basically the looks of the site, right? We know it's important, blah, 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 blah. We want it to look like some supermodel, right? We want our apps to look good. And that's what the front end does. We utilize tools like JavaScript, Next.js, Felt, Tailwind CSS for the design. However, the front end is just for the looks. And so for example, right, in my application here, the front end for this authentication will just be what you can see. So you can see here, I had to create the text to write name. I had to create an input so we can put in someone's name. Same thing for the email, same thing for the password. The front end would also include stuff like the button hover. So it's just the design, okay? Now, as many of us know though, the front end can only take us so far. Unless you wanna be some front end basic developer, you will not really do much in terms of big applications, starting businesses, or just building cool software. And that is where the backend comes in. And now you're probably saying like, what's the difference then between a backend and a database, right? And basically, okay, the backend includes everything from the security of a website to the database, stuff like authentication. However, what we are actually covering and what we will talk about then is the database, okay? These over here are databases. And so the main functionalities then of a backend or database, I'm gonna use them inter you know, intertwine, but I know there are different things, but we're just gonna, for simplicity's sake, say that the backend is a database. So I'm actually gonna change it real quick. Well, basically, okay? Once we have the front end, we need it to do something. And what the backend and the database will do for us is store that user, create a user, and allow us to make our sites functional and good. So here, let's create a user, right? Let's say my name is John. My email is john at gmail12.com, whatever. And then the password, let's just write a bunch of things, right? This is just the front end so far, but what the back end will allow us to do is once we click this button, we will have a confirmation email sent, and that is done as a result of the back end. And so hopefully right now you kind of understand the difference between the front end and the back end. Looks is for the front end, back end database is for functionalities, okay? And just one more thing before we get into the nitty gritty, I'm sorry if this is taking a bit long, but I hope you're understanding why, because we really need to understand this before getting into it. We have one more thing to cover, okay? Sure, we have the looks and the functionalities, but these two cannot communicate with each other. You may be saying, Nazar, yeah, okay, like front end database, what the hell is the API doing here? Basically, okay? The API allows the front end and the back and the back end or database to talk with each other. It allows us to use languages such as JavaScript, TypeScript, or Node.js to allow us to talk with the back end or the front end. So the use case in this example for the registration page may be we write a piece of code in the API to tell it to store the username, email, and password in the database. So front end looks, database stores information and makes the site functional. And finally, the API allows us to communicate with both. And so if we head over to our code, we can kind of go over what this could look like in a real life application, okay? We'll be using my code platform for this as an example. And by the way, in this example, we're using Prisma DB. It's my favorite database. I just enjoy using it. There's nothing special about it. It's just the one I like. You may like MongoDB, uh, Firebase, whatever it may be, but this is the one we'll be covering. And so, okay, right? So a real life example, let's say we are building out the courses section to our app where we want to be able to create courses for our users. So maybe we have something like this where we can name the course, let's just call it JS for JavaScript. And here we have a bunch of tools that allow us to create the course of our choice. And so you may be looking at this and say, okay, what's special about this, Nazar? Well, how this works, right, is we want the code to remember what we're writing here and store it so that we can display it to our users. For example, here I have a finished quote unquote course. It's not really done, but the everything is written in here. We need the code to remember what the hell we're writing. And to do that, it all starts in our database. And what I usually do 
is create something like a model where we are storing different aspects of our front end. So I know, right, in each course, I need a user ID, an ID, a title of the course, a description, an image, you know, the, you know the gist. And if we go back to the front end, you can see we have the title, the course description, we have the image, basically everything we need to store that thing. And this one's actually a lot, but even if you wanna see another example, we may have a chapter for each video, right? For each course, we have chapters in it. So we'll have a title for that, a description, a position. And maybe if you wanna buy the course, right? We have a Stripe customer where we have the customer ID, the course that we're selling, so stuff like that, okay? However, as said, the database itself doesn't really do much, right? We need them to be able to communicate with each other, you know, the front end and the back end. And to do that, we can go into our API. And once we head to the front end, you can actually understand what's going on. But here we have the code for the input of the course title. So it would be this thing over here. And look, I am assuming you know what the front end is and you know how it works and you're just trying to learn the back end. And so how we are communicating, how we are sending this data, how we're taking the user's input and allowing it to go and be stored in the back end to be remembered is using, as we talked about, an API. And so in our example here, we're using an on submit function where we are grabbing the values within the user's input and we are going into the API and writing the code to go into our database. And so again, here's how it would work, right? Here we would have the course creation form. The API will take that information that the user wrote as a value and store it in the database to be remembered. And so this is what the code would look like, for example. So we are essentially grabbing the title from over here. So we're just grabbing the value of the title, taking it into the API, telling the code, hey, wait for this title and do stuff with it. And here is where the main magic happens for Prisma DB. It may be different for another language, but here we're just telling it that the data includes the title. And what we want is once you get the title of the course, create a new course. So db.course. And if you don't know where we're grabbing this course, it's from this over here, from the model. And so we're just telling it to create a new course. And I'll actually show you what this could look like in real time. We can just run MPX Prisma Studio to run the database in the back end. And once we go into the course, you can see we currently have the JS that we wrote and the other ones that are currently available. However, let's say we wanted to create a new course, right? We could just go over here and we can say hello, okay? Let's just call it hello just for obvious sakes. Right now, what we did is very simple. We just created it, but all the code you just saw was to do this. We can go back to the Prisma Studio and we can refresh. And you can see right now we have the hello course. And why did that happen? It's because we took the stuff from here where we got the course title. We created an API to take that title and store it into here. And if you notice something quite interesting, it is that the course over here, right? The hello course that we wrote has an ID, user ID, title, description, image URL, intro video, everything over here, you know, a bunch of different aspects. And if we go over here to the database where we have the model, we have all the aspects that we need to implement. And here we have another example where we're updating the course if there is a course available and we're simply updating it when the user does stuff to it, which is basically anything being done in here. And if you wanna know how I install Prisma, it's basically just npm install Prisma client. And then in the code, I'm writing these three above here, and then I'm just creating the user models. Okay, there's more to the setup. It's, it's really simple to set up. You just have to do it. You just have to look at the documentation and do it. But hopefully you learned a decent amount about databases and how it works in real time. Again, don't worry too much about the real like nitty gritty of it. You will eventually understand it. And so one more time, the backend makes your applications functional. And all you had to do was just create a model, have a front end and a way to talk to the back end. And look, there's much more to the database than just communication. Sometimes we need to call data from the back end and put it into the front end. And if you want to know real quick how we did that, here's how we did it. We're basically grabbing the course model from the back end like we talked about earlier. So here we're grabbing the course. And we're telling the code, hey, grab everything, including the chapters and the progress from the course and go through them all and display them onto the code. 
And so this code, right, is displaying everything in here. This is it. This is the code that we're displaying. And we're just grabbing the specific key, the specific ID, the specific title, the specific image, so on and so forth. And look, I know there's much more to the back end and the databases, and I know that they're different things. I don't hear a single person saying that they're different. I know they're different. The back end is an umbrella term for database functionalities and stuff like that. If you want a more detailed example of this, then let me know. I'll make a more in-depth video about maybe setting up or maybe building out a full stack application together. However, hopefully you learned the real basics of how it works. And by the way, if you want to join our Discord server, I'll leave it below. It's the best freaking community out there. We have over 800 people right now. And I just, I just love it. Oh, speaking of the devil, Firebase. But it's, it's just an amazing community of like-minded individuals starting businesses, starting community projects. We're even going to start an open source project soon, which is really exciting. So if you're, you know, interested in that, then I, I will leave the description to the Discord channel below. And also, if you want the free web developer roadmap, where we have everything here that I did, to learn to code on my own, then it's a full stack developer roadmap. So you're gonna learn everything. Uh, then I'll leave this down below. But yeah, good luck on your journey. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.